Here at Fully Charged, I'm talking to uh, Chet from Electric uh, Garage. And um, well, first, we really love all the videos you made with you and Richie are coming with. First, I mean, if we talk about uh, repairing a Tesla, what kind of problems do you get into? Uh, wide variety. We do basic maintenance, we do brake upgrades, suspension, uh, we're getting into electronic repair, we're doing a lot of EMMC replacements and upgrading on that as well. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the, your background, uh, which brands did you put it experience, uh, did you get experience? Uh, I started off in Toyota, uh, after Toyota I went to BMW, I, somewhere in between Toyota and BMW I did a lot of independent work as well. Um, I was BMW shop foreman for 13 years, did a lot of that, and then I went to Tesla for about six. You know everything about it. And, and then you did Tesla for six. How was the change going from BMW to Tesla in the way of working? Believe it or not, it was actually easier. T uh, BMW has a lot more wiring and a lot more complication to it. Tesla really simplified the process, so it made it kind of nice. Um, a lot of the stuff, the CAN buses and whatnot, we already used in, t in BMW. So it was kind of an easy switch over to, to Tesla. The only thing is you have a lot more high voltage components now in a, in a Tesla than you do in a BMW. And the electronics, how different is that? It's it's about the same. So they, they use similar manufacturing, uh, same companies. You know, there's a lot of German product in there as well, so that, that helps out a lot. Okay. So you talk, we had a session in here, and there was the right to repair. What what kind of law is that, and what are companies uh, supposed to do? So the right to repair act means that if you're a dealership and you have a product line like a, a Chevy Bolt or whatever that's mass produced that you should ha be able to have access to the diagnostics for that vehicle. So like you can buy an aftermarket scan tool that you can actually diagnose it yourself in a shop, a mom and pop shop, whatever. You don't have to be a dealer to do that. Okay. There has to be independent repair possibilities apart from the OEM and the dealership. Correct, correct. Okay. So that means that the documentation has to be public and, the, and, the, and all the parts need to be sold uh, public? Yeah, so it, it's not just sold, but accessible. Yeah. So they might charge you for the information, but it's there. I get that, but at the same time, it's there. So, so other manufacturers are trying to get around that, so they don't have to do that. They're trying to try, you know, get it on their own. But um, so that's I, I believe in the right to repair. You know, you should yeah. be able to. Everybody should be able to fix their own vehicle. Well, and I mean, I see it. I mean, I'm from Amsterdam. It's impossible to get any kind of service in uh, in Tesla because they're completely overwhelmed. Ten percent of the Model 3s went to Holland, and the whole country is flooded, and you cannot find any kind of repair. So this is very important. How open uh, is and then open and uh, and then how easy is it to work with Tesla to do third-party repair? They kind of don't want to know about us. They, they, they let us exist, and that's about it. They don't really bother us, but at the same time, they're not really helping very much. You know, okay, they, so they don't have an active helping, but can you get parts? Can you get documentation? Can you get diagnostics? Uh, diagnostics, no. Uh, parts, that's kind of hard. You have to have an account and a valid VIN number, and you can order some basic parts. You can't order anything structural. You can't anything more high voltage parts. So you're kind of limited to what you can. And the documentation's there, but it's not a lot of uh, in-depth uh, documentation. So it's like basic stuff. And do you think that is because they're very busy and they haven't gone around to build an infrastructure to support the service, or is it more that they don't want to? It's more they don't want to. They don't want to. They, they want to keep everything in house. It's kind of like a, another Apple. You know, it's they don't want anybody to understand what they're doing in their cars. They don't want to share that because they're afraid that you know it'll be unlocked or somebody else will take their technology and run away with it through another manufacturing. It's, so it's kind of I kind of understand it, but at the same time, you kind of have to be able to fix these cars because. Obviously, the service centers are overwhelmed. Now, you're saying Holland, they're overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed here. Yeah. There's only two in New England right now, yeah. and, and they're, they're backed up weeks. So it's it takes two months to get an uh, appointment, and then you cannot drive your car. It's really ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. So that's why we're here. Yeah. So And there's too few of you. And I, I basically want to interview because we have a bunch of people in Holland which are doing third-party repair, the door handles and the, uh, the MMC, uh, the EMC uh, yep. problem and that kind of stuff. What are the most... Mostly, what are the problems which you fix the most uh, on Tesla, and are you able to fix? Well, we, we do all the, everything you just mentioned. We do that as well. I actually developed a kit for the door handle to rebuild it with better parts than what's out there. Uh, there's some with ribbon cables and some weird stuff that people have done. We've actually designed it from the ground up 
a completely new wiring, new switches, the whole night. It looks almost like a, a proper part that goes in, but it's, it's way improved. Uh, same thing with the paddle gear for the door handles presenting. We actually created a stainless steel model one, so it's significantly stronger. It doesn't rust, don't have corrosion issues, and it doesn't break. And is that much cheaper than a new one? Yes, because the only way you can get a new one is a retrofit now. They don't offer just a new door handle that replaces the same door handle. They offer the newer version of it, which has hall sensors and stuff like that, but it's an upgrade. You have to buy a module, you have to buy a whole wiring harness, you have to get a, um, uh, a, a you have to have Tesla do it and retrofit it into the vehicle. Uh -huh. So it's very expensive. Yes, it's around eight, nine hundred dollars, something like that, a door handle. And, and what is your uh, reap cost? Uh, we use it depends on what we do. We offer it as a kit, we offer it as a whole handle, or we offer it as a rebuild service. But if I come and you basically put in a new kit, is it like a three hundred, four hundred, five hundred? Uh, I think it's under under hundred dollars. It's like around a hundred dollars or so. A hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's really for the, for the switch. You know, for the switch. If you want a paddle gear, it's a little more. Uh, we offer a whole kit, so you, we can give you door. Hand so it's faster and much cheaper. Yes. Talk to me about the EMMC chip, which you basically have to take out. And you were saying you were going to provide uh, videos. Uh, trainings, how to take the MMC out. When did that first occur and, and how many times does it happen? We've done quite a few already. And it happens, it's, depending on how much you use your vehicle and how much it sits. You know, if it sits a lot, it doesn't really go as bad as much because it's not doing anything. As you're driving, there's script running in the background that's overwhelming the, the uh, memory chips. The memory chips are only 8 gig. And what happens is it's constantly filling up scripts, racing, rewriting, erasing, rewriting, and it's burning them up. Uh, we're working on with another company that's actually replacing the chips with bigger chips, and they're faster, much faster. Than so you build it out, you take the chip, the, the board out, you send the board to somebody, they basically put it out. How much is the cost total now? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers with me right now, depending on how you bring it to us. If you bring the whole vehicle to us, there's more for the labor pulling it out ourselves, whereas if you just send us the MCU or if uh, you just do it. So there's, there's a bunch of packages we offer. If you look on our website, we're constantly updating it. Okay. Uh, so we, we like to price out everything on the website so you know exactly what you're in for. So we offer that as a service. Um, we also offer like um, pretty much any, anything you would need to do on your car that you can't get done anywhere else we, we offer. What kind of things can you, you not do at the moment? Uh, I mean, uh, in the, uh, the S, the X, and the, and the Model, and of course the Model 3 is complete new territory. Right, right. It's the three is new territory, so we're not really, we're doing more accessory installs for the Model 3 right now. We do upgrading brakes, we have oversized race brakes, we have suspension components, um, we do coil over suspensions, a lot, of, a lot of that type of stuff. We're actually getting into um, airbag suspensions for them. We have uh, the Model S and the X are kind of the same platform, so both of them are about the same with what you can do. Um, we've done battery repairs, like not, not actual cell replacement, but actually battery replacements to, to kind of change them out to, to keep them going. But the modules, the, the individual modules, or the whole the whole battery. The whole battery, whole battery. The modules. That's a whole another another ball game where you have to kind of know how they work and um, there's calibrations per brick. And if you get into that, it might not work, and then you also might not get it sealed back because those are watertight. So if you don't get it sealed just right, you got a new problem. So we're trying to stay away from that at the moment. We don't really have the facility to handle that type of stuff, but we'd like to get into that. It's something you know for the future expansion. So, so you have know, one uh, factory, you uh, one garage. Uh, you're going to get a second one. Then, of course, we are interested all around the world. We want to have service from you. We want to have the uh, Electric Garage University. Is that something you're working with people so that your knowledge can be multiplied? And you can get money for it. I, we're, we're definitely considering it when it's not out of the realm. Um, it, it's a lot of undertaking. Yeah. So trying to get the shop going and the other shop and all that stuff, it's a lot. But yes, we, we would love to do that. Um, we'd love to get um, just a basic knowledge out there for people to say, yes, you can do that. we got to do it safely, but you can do that. You know. Hey, thanks very much. Good luck getting to a hundred of electric factory, electric garages all over the world. He's starting now with one and two.